Hurricanes can be a lot scarier than we often realize, especially since they can actually trigger earthquakes. This surprising and frightening phenomenon, known as storm quakes, was discovered completely by accident not too long ago. It started with scientists trying to find out more about low-frequency earthquakes. We're talking about those earthquakes that are so weak that we can't actually feel the tremor. See, beneath our feet, the Earth is constantly vibrating in subtle, unceasing ways that we can't hear or see without the right equipment. This geologic hum, so to speak, is driven by the movement of oceans, which covers about 70% of our planet's surface. Scientists have found that this hum may actually provide useful records of environmental happenings. To figure out where it's coming from, experts use equipment known as seismometers. You can think of these devices as little ears pressed to the ground. They can pick up all sorts of vibrations, like fans jumping up and down at their idol's concert, airplanes flying by, or even super-distant earthquakes shaking the ground. Very low-frequency earthquakes are hard to track over long distances, because the signals they produce can look different on different measuring devices. To solve this problem, experts came up with a way to track these signals by combining readings from smaller areas kind of like putting together a puzzle. But while doing this, they stumbled upon a strange set of events that looked a bit like the earthquakes they were studying, but were not exactly the same. The first weird thing they noticed was that this specific phenomenon was seasonal. It never happened between May and August, for example. That is completely different from earthquakes, which can pretty much happen any time of the year. The second strange thing is that earthquakes usually occur more in the western part of the United States, where the ground moves along cracks in the surface. But these new strange vibrations spread not just along the west coast of North America, but also over to the east side. So what could be triggering this new phenomenon? What they surprisingly discovered is that many of these tremors coincided with the same time that massive storms hit North America. So we are essentially talking about a chain reaction. What happens is that during a specific season, hurricanes or heavy storms can transfer energy into the oceans, creating very strong waves. These waves then interact with the solid Earth, producing intense seismic activity. These bursts of energy that are born from massive storms can radiate thousands of miles across continents, leading to what we now call storm quakes. It is believed that this phenomenon can trigger earthquakes at a magnitude of up to 3.5 on the Richter scale. This means it can be felt by many people, but normally doesn't cause any damage. But that doesn't mean we can all be relaxed now, as ocean waters can indeed increase the intensity of hurricanes. Just like what happened with the frightening Hurricane Melton, which recently left a path of destruction across Florida. The blue-purplish zone you're looking at is Hurricane Melton seen from a satellite perspective. On October 9th, this hurricane sustained winds of 155 miles per hour and lashed the region with heavy rainfall, damaging winds, and life-threatening storm surges. Estimates show that the losses could be up to $34 billion, which could make it one of the costliest storms in United States history. What happened with Hurricane Milton was pretty tricky. It all started with some record hot water in the Gulf of Mexico. That warm water acted like a power-up, giving this hurricane the energy it needed to grow. And then, there was also this process called eyewall replacement that helped to get bigger too. We'll get to that in a moment. So as Hurricane Milton approached the coast, something unusual happened. It crossed paths with a fast-moving air current called the jet stream, which flows high up in the atmosphere. Now normally, the winds in the northern and northwest parts of a hurricane are not as strong as those in other areas. But because of this interaction with the jet stream, the winds in these parts of the storm became much stronger than expected. At nearly every turn, Hurricane Milton surprised everyone and intensified faster than we have seen in ages. It threatened to slam both Florida's west and east coasts with a dangerous surge of water, putting the bustling area of Tampa Bay, which is home to over 3 million people, at serious risk. So how did Milton become such a major problem? Well, the problem started in the eastern Pacific Ocean. Usually, hurricanes follow a fairly predictable path, spinning off of Africa's coast, sailing across the Atlantic, and gaining strength in the warm Caribbean waters. 
but Melton had a twist in its origin story. It began as the remnants of a tropical depression that crossed over the Yucatan Peninsula and met a stalled front in the Gulf. Once Milton got going, it didn't hold back. But when it hit those record-high ocean temperatures, it was like giving it an energy drink. The warm water and humid air were the perfect ingredients for a hurricane on the rise. Quickly, Milton's wind speeds increased by 92 miles per hour. So it went from a tropical storm to a Category 5 hurricane in less than two days, which is basically insane and off the charts. And if that wasn't enough, Hurricane Milton also went through this thing called eyewall replacement. Now, hurricanes spin around a mostly clear eye in the center. But overnight, Milton started forming new bands of rain on its outer edges, creating a second ring around its eye. This process helped Milton grow even bigger, spreading out the wind speeds and giving it a larger footprint. It's kind of like shedding its skin and getting ready to become even more powerful. Hurricane Melton also had this little wobble in its path, which changed where it was heading. You can think of it like a spinning top that gets nudged and wobbles a bit before finding its balance again. That wobble meant some areas could get either hit hard or be spared from the worst of the storm. Thankfully, Hurricane Melton weakened a bit because of some tricky wind changes up in the atmosphere until it finally made landfall. After that, it moved across the peninsula and headed out to sea, quickly losing strength as it pulled away from the warmer waters. Now, even though the damage was significant, the good news, if you can call it that, is that experts were honestly expecting things to be way, way worse. Still, it raises a question. How close was Milton's wind speed to the maximum? Or, in other words, is there a limit to how strong a hurricane can get? Well, the answer is yes, there is a speed limit for hurricane winds, but it's not a set number. Right now, the strongest the storm can get is around 200 miles per hour. But that maximum speed can change depending on many factors, like the heat in the ocean. Think of the ocean as the fuel for hurricanes. The warmer the water, the more fuel these storms have to work with. Experts believe that as the oceans continue to warm, they can ramp up the wind speeds and the impacts of hurricanes, making them a lot stronger. But other things can also help figure out how intense a hurricane can get. For example, the heat in the air and the temperature at the top of the clouds matter, as they also affect how fast heat moves from the ocean surface to the top of the storm. Some estimates suggest that maximum wind speeds could reach closer to 220 miles per hour until the end of the century. So it's definitely something that experts need to keep an eye on to help prevent future disasters. As we move forward, it's essential to keep researching and studying these storms. The more we understand them, the better we can protect ourselves and our communities. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.